Today, our focus is on Great Eastern Shipping. The company has come out with its Q4 results, revenue about 2.8% of an uptick, while margins have gone up by 334 basis points at 62.14%. Net profit about 25% of an uptick compared to last year's quarter. Now, we have, but to discuss more, we are in conversation with G. Shiv Kumar, the CFO and the executive director of the company. Hello and welcome, Mr. Shiv Kumar. Thank you. Hello, and thank you for having me. My first question for you is the March quarter's performance. Now, if we look at the sequential, uh, in in a sequential manner, it is one of your uh, seasonally weaker quarters. But again, we saw some uptick compared to the December one. So I just wanted to understand what has led to this, and again, what should we look forward as of going ahead? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Thank you. That's a good question. It is typically a seasonally weak quarter for the dry bulk business. It's a, the weakest quarter usually for the dry bulk business, but a strong quarter traditionally for the tanker business. And the tanker business has been strong. The dry bulk market has been unusually strong considering uh, that it's supposed to be the seasonally the weakest quarter. And the reason why the dry bulk market was strong was because Chinese imports were strong, Brazilian iron ore exports were strong. Uh, and as you know, Brazil to China is a very long route. Uh, every additional ton of cargo from Brazil to China requires more ships than on any other route in dry bulk. Uh, and that's why dry bulk was strong. On the tanker front, tankers were strong because of the disruption caused in the Red Sea. Uh, ships have been rerouting around Africa when they're going from, uh, say, the Middle East to uh, Europe, and that resulted in demand for more ships. And that's why tankers were also strong. Absolutely. Now, you have described about the dry bulk business remaining strong. But to come to the Baltic index for the month, if you're looking, we have seen some kind of an uptick over here. What does this mean going forward? Uh, typically, this, this is the time when the index recovers, the Baltic freight rates recover for dry bulk. Uh, because seasonally they come off the weak period, which is Jan, March, and start improving from April and May and go into a fairly strong summer. So this, uh, the strengthening is not unusual. Uh, however, the good thing is that we are seeing strengthening across all sectors in the sense that we are seeing the Cape sizes, which are the big bulk carriers, also strong. And we are seeing the smaller vessels also, which is the Panamax, Camser Max, and the Supermaxes. Uh, doing quite well. Uh, so the dry bulk market is showing quite a lot of strength, uh, possibly on the back of stronger dry bulk trade flows. We've seen Chinese imports of iron ore and coal being quite strong. Indian imports of coal also have been quite strong. Absolutely. Now, the major highlight, if you look at the second half of the year, has been obviously the Red Sea impact that we are seeing. Um, major disruption in the Suez channel. But uh, uh, Suez Canal, again, if you look at the Panama Canal, also some disruption over here. I want to understand now what is going on there currently and how should we look forward to this situation in terms of next year onwards and this quarter, in fact, like how are we seeing the uh, trends going on over there? Yeah, on these two disruptions, the one update on the Panama Canal is that we were at 32 to 34 transits, ship transits at peak. That came down to below 20 uh, at the bottom uh, when the Panama Canal was at its driest, which was early 2024, that was around December, January. That's now back up. They've had some unseasonal rains and it's back up to the low 20s and they're expecting to go back to the high 20s uh, by the end of this monsoon season, which is in the next three to six months. So you should have a little bit of reversal there. Uh, on the Suez Canal, it's anybody's guess. This is a geopolitical thing. It's not a weather-related thing. So it's anybody's guess what happens to it. It could stop tomorrow or it could continue for the next year. So we just don't know that. Absolutely. Again, I wanted to understand there had been some US sanctions um, in the crude tanker segment. So I wanted to understand what does this mean for, uh, for our segment also in the crude tanker as well going forward. Do we see any sort of impact over here? So the sanctions that we've seen recently have been very focused and have affected a small number of ships. As a result, they haven't had much impact on the wider market. 
What is also happening is because of the fear of sanctions, less people are doing the Russian trade, less owners, legitimate owners are willing to do the Russian trade. So it's not had a significant impact on the market balances recently, the, these round of sanctions. Maybe if there are more widespread sanctions, it could have an impact, but otherwise, no. Absolutely. So small impact over here. Now coming to the order book. So our order book has remained on the lower side. But if you are to look at your presentation, you have mentioned that there has been some build up in both the crude, uh, crude tanker and the product tanker. So what kind of outlook does this pain for the markets going forward over here? Okay. Uh, so the order book has indeed built up, as you said, that there has been a significant pay pick up in the pace of ordering of tankers. The good thing is that these ships are likely to come only in 2026 or 2027. There's nothing much coming in 24 and 25 in, in terms of new tonnage joining the fleet. Uh, and therefore, that threat of the new supply is limited, as, uh, at least for the tankers. Uh, it's still not a large number in, if you see it in relation to the old fleet. There are a lot of old ships uh, which are still uh, in the active fleet, uh, mainly because the market is so strong. If the market becomes weak, uh, then you will find the old ships going, which gives a little bit of a safety net to the demand supply balance. So if there is an oversupply of ships because of new ships coming in, uh, then you could have old ships being scrapped and removed from the fleet, which will bring the market back into balance. Absolutely. Mr. Shiv Kumar, now moving on to the vessel sites, uh, the repricing, about 12 of our vessels are getting repriced uh, and that too if I'm not wrong in the first half of FY25. So can you quantify what is the extent of repricing that we are looking at and how does that lead to our margins, our EBITDA in terms of an incremental sense? Yeah, so uh, this is the offshore vessels that you're referring to. Right. We have 12 of them coming up for repricing within the next few months. Uh, most repricings are happening at higher levels. I, in fact, all repricing are happening at higher than previous levels. And if I had to quantify this, I would put this at an average of three to four thousand dollars a day better than previous contracts. Uh, and since a cost base is uh, yeah, is fixed. Uh, this is an addition to, this goes flow straight from top line to bottom line. So all of these vessels are getting repriced and uh, pricing is better because the market is just better. These are th typically three-year contracts. Market in 2024 is much better than it was in 2021 for the offshore vessels. And therefore, the repricings are happening at much better rates, which of course will feed through into our profitability. Okay, so better outlook for the offshore vessels over here that you've mentioned about. But now if I look at the Saudi Aramco side, some cancellation has happened over here, about 90 rigs to be uh, precise. Now, what is the kind of impact that we look at for our offshore vessels over here? Yeah, so we have two rigs coming up for pricing in this year. Uh, they're coming off their earlier three-year contracts. There are tenders in place, uh, which are under process. Uh, one tender got cancelled, which is relating to where we had bid our rig grade drill Chetna. Uh, the other tender is under process still. Typically, uh, what happens in the Middle East should not affect this market. These are disparate markets, and you're unlikely to find rigs which are uh, which are which have been cancelled in Saudi Arabia coming to India. There, it's not very likely for that to happen. Uh, so it shouldn't have a practical impact. It might have a small impact on sentiment internationally. Practically, it should not have an impact on the Indian market, really. All right, Mr. Shiv Kumar, before, before I let you go, my final question is, what is the key strategies that we are looking to place for FY25 going forward? So can you just highlight on the picture forward? Yeah. yeah. So a uh, couple of things that we're doing, we have of course collected a lot of cash, our balance sheet is very light, we need to do, we would like to do more capex and expand. However, the prices are expensive and therefore we are not likely to do a large amount of capex currently. What we're doing is replacing our old tonnage with more modern tonnage. Uh, we will wait for the market downturn uh, to invest a significant portion of our uh, resources. Uh, so we are going to be patient and wait for the markets to come to the right prices for us to invest. 
All right. Thank you so much for joining in and having Thank this you. conversation. We look forward to next quarter to discuss more. Thank you very much.